am Christine Connor with the Amelie Scott Designs. Please visit my website at www.ameliescott.com. I have some really cute stuff out there. Today I'm going to show you how to do binding on a small project. I've been really busy making and design, designing and making um, all these really cute mug rugs. This is my winter collection. Here's my snowman, my snowflake, the mittens, and the mug, the hot cocoa mug. Here's my Irish set. If any of you have been to Ireland, you'll love these. Here are the sheep that are everywhere. The pint of a, uh, you know what, I guess. The dolman and the harp. And the spring mug rug set for all of those, for those of you who are just absolutely sick of this horrible winter we've been having in 2014. Here's my birdie and the watering can, the rain boot, the flower, and the birdhouse. So you probably find this hard to believe, but I've made about a hundred of these, and I don't have any that I can put my mug on because I keep giving them away or sending them off to people. So today I have, I just finished making this little sheep mug rug. That's one of my favorites. I love my little sky in this one. And I want to show you how to do the binding for it, for them. Um, it's a little different from doing a binding that you would do on a quilt um, because it's such a tiny uh, piece, uh, a tiny rectangle that it's kind of hard to get it all lined up with that mitered seam at the very end. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First what you need to do is you need a two and a half inch strip, just one of them, and let me go get that. So I'm over at my ironing board. This is my two and a half inch strip. This is the right side. I'm going to flip it over so that I have the wrong side facing up. I'm going to take the upper right hand corner and I'm going to fold it down so I have this nice 45 degree angle and I'm going to press it. Get a little steam. Once I've pressed it, I'm going to fold it so that the two wrong sides are together and I'm going to press this all the way down just like you would do with normal regular binding. So when you're done pressing, you'll have a strip that looks something like this. Now let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so when I put my binding on, I want to start on one of the long edges. Here's that folded uh, 45 degree miter that I folded over and I want to start it so that the bottom point is about halfway down the mug rug, down one length and when I start sewing I want to come down about an inch and a half that's where I want to start because when I sew all this around I'm going to actually tuck the other end into here so I want to leave some room for tucking so I'm going to start about right here I have a quarter inch foot on with a guide. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it. I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to do a little back tack. And then I'm going to go on my merry way. When I get a quarter inch away from the edge, and I can tell that on my, on my foot, because, let me make sure you guys can see here, I have a little red line right here. And when that line gets lined up with the edge of my fabric, that tells me I'm exactly a quarter inch away. I'm going to stop, pull it out, I'm going to turn the corner, let me back up here a bit so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to flip it straight up. So now I have a 45 degree fold and my raw edges are going are straight up and down. My, my binding, let me just put it up here for you. The raw edges are going in a nice straight line. Now, I'm going to crease that. I'm going to fold it back over itself. I'm going to stick it back under the machine. And I'm going to continue to stitch. I like to do a little back tack here. Oh, that didn't sound good. And then I'm going to continue along my merry way until I get one quarter inch away from the edge, and then I'm going to stop. If you like, you can back tack here too. One more. Okay, I'm going to continue this all the way around. All right, so I am back on the edge where I started. I want to tuck this end into here, but as you can see, I have way too much fabric. 
So I'm going to bring it down, just bring it down straight along that edge. Here's where my stitching is right here, the stitching line. So I'm gonna just cut right above that. I just literally hold it tight, come right above the stitching and just cut like such. And I take these cute little tweezers with the little girl, aren't they cute? And I tuck that in with the tweezers. You can do it with your fingers too. I'm just, I like my tweezers. And I just pull real tight, tuck it down in there. And then I'm just gonna stitch the remainder of that down. When I get to where my first stitches are, I'm gonna do a little back tack and I am done. So I'm back over to the iron. What I want to do is I want to press all this out on the front, but I want to make sure I put a pressing cloth down over my uh, stitching because I've used polyester thread and polyester thread and a hot iron don't like each other. Um, and then I will fold it to the back and I will show you how to hand stitch in the next video.